if you want to see what it looks like, where even an up, a Republican that one would look at as upstanding, after all, he voted to impeach the president, to convict the president of impeachment. But even this guy bends himself, himself into pretzels to not speak too ill of Donald Trump. On all the questions asked him, the only one that he really went completely against Donald Trump is where Donald Trump is, if elected, would uh, free all of the insurrectionists that were that's been convicted. But other than that, for every question, he tried to do a balanced approach. You know, it, it, unequal equivalences. What he tried to do is, yeah, false equivalences is what he did. But he made it clear that even the upstanding Republicans that remain in the party simply, simply cannot speak out appropriately on Donald Trump. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. One of only seven Republicans who voted to convict Donald Trump in his impeachment for attempting to overturn the 2020 election. Senator Cassidy, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. I want to start by getting your reaction to Donald Trump's comments about a bloodbath do you think that those comments were appropriate? Two things about that. The, the general tone of the speech is why is why uh, many Americans continue to wonder, should President Trump be president? Uh, that kind of rhetoric, it's always on the edge, maybe doesn't cross, maybe does, depending upon your perspective. I also think, though, that the mainstream media contributes to it. If you take the one about the bloodbath, which arguably could be about an economic bloodbath, not about kind of street violence related to the election, then it gives his defense defenders uh, something to focus on as something which was distorted. Uh, so, yes, he always walks up to the edge on that rhetoric. And again, that's why people are concerned. Uh, but sometimes the mainstream media, whether they want to or not, can't, can't resist. And they go just a little bit too far, which distracts from what, what could be the impact. And just to be very clear, you're saying it walks up to the line. Does that comment, even if in the context, that broader backdrop of talking about the auto industry, does it cross a line for you? You heard what the Biden administration said. They say it's another uh, sign that he's using terms related to political violence. Well, that's that's their perspective. Uh, they've got a candidate who also doesn't seem fit for office. Uh, but you could also look up at the definition of bloodbath and it could be an economic disaster. And so if he's speaking about the auto industry in particular in Ohio, then you can take it a little bit more context. That's why I say you walk up to the line, depending upon the perspective, somebody is going to interpret it. He's running against Biden. So Biden is going to say it's about political violence. His defenders want to defend him. And so they're going to say it's about economic disaster. Uh, there's always just that little bit of tension there, which allows the dispute about the interpretation as opposed to the kind of general sort of, uh, is this the person we want to have in office? And what about his comments that undocumented immigrants, not all of them are people? What does it say about the Republican Party that the presumptive GOP nominee is using that kind of language, sending that message. Let me, let me say first, he was speaking about the possibility of criminals being among the immigrants. And that those are the people he was saying may not be people, if you will. Uh, on the other hand, uh, clearly, the president's rhetoric has reflected poorly uh, in terms of regarding folks who are coming here illegally, illegally, and they shouldn't be, uh, but in a dehumanizing fashion. And that's why, again, many people continue to have reservations. And I say the best thing going for Donald Trump running for president is that he's running against Joe Biden, about whom many people also have reservations. And frankly, that's why people are considering third parties. So it's, it's, uh, it's a sorry state of affairs. Well, let me ask you about some recent comments he made about January 6th. He said on the first day of a second term, he would, quote, free those who've been charged and convicted with January 6th and committing crimes related to January 6th. Do you think that's appropriate, that, that people who've been convicted in many cases have pled guilty should be pardoned? I do not think it's appropriate. We're a nation of laws. And those folks who are convicted, many times they pled guilty. Uh, if you plead guilty, i.e., obviously you are not a patriot, you're somebody who committed a criminal act. Uh, so I think that would be a wrong signal if you're the chief executive and you're responsible for enforcing the laws. Senator, you know, it's interesting when you 
became one of those who voted to convict former President Trump in his second impeachment, you said, our Constitution and our country is more important than any one person. Do you believe that former President Trump would follow the Constitution in a second term? Now, that is a hypothetical, which is hard for me to kind of go at. And and frankly, Kristen, that's the kind of question that people ask Uh, almost begging an answer. All I can say is that we have checks and balances within our system that if any one person attempts to act in an unconstitutional fashion, that they can be, that can be theoretically checked. Now think about this. Think about this. Is this senator so naive? He said, our institutions can hold. Our Supreme Court, one of our institutions, hadn't hold. Hadn't held. Our Congress hasn't held. The only possibility we have to hold, meaning to maintain our democracy, is not electing Donald Trump because he has proven that the sycophants will follow. Whether they believe it or not, they will follow. And if you have somebody like Bill Cassidy here, even afraid to go too far in his disagreement with Trump, it says much. Folks, you better vote appropriately in November. Otherwise, it's on you. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.